Hello, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. And uh, you know what this is? This is a, a runner from a strawberry. There's a main plant and it sends out a baby and tries to put it in the ground to start a new strawberry plant. You could take advantage of that. Every year each strawberry plant probably makes two or three or four new strawberry plants, which is great. But what if they're not growing where you want them to grow? Or what if you've got an area in your garden where you want more strawberries? You can use these to make new strawberries for free. So stay with me and I'm going to show you how to do that. Well, hello, I'm here by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, beautiful spring Nova Scotia. And then today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. I'm going to talk about garlic. Hello, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. And uh, it's a foggy, overcast evening here. It's about to rain. And that's a perfect time to move plants or, sorry about the wind, uh, try to propagate things or get anything going that requires taking a plant and putting it in a vulnerable position, right? Um, when you do things to plants that upset them, you don't want them baking in the sun. You want them, you know, it's good to do it in the evening, it's good to do it when you know there's going to be rain. It's supposed to rain this evening and it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow, so this is a great time to uh, move plants and because I had so many questions coming in my last video about uh, strawberries and moving strawberries and what to do with strawberries I thought I'd just do a quick video today on how to take a runner from a strawberry plant Disconnect it from that plant Put it somewhere else and get that going in the ground And that's the approach I took to propagating half the strawberries I have in this garden So stay with me and let's have a look at all that So if you look here, we got some strawberries. I didn't buy any of these. These were all runners that rooted over there and I just cut them off when uh, at the appropriate time which I'll show you today and then move them over to here and gradually they're they're colonizing this area. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by saying the runner's ready. So if you look down here, here's a runner that uh, is growing in my walkway, right? Uh, that's one can, that can be moved somewhere else. And it falls, uh, you know, this is, uh, I don't know, September 2nd or September 3rd, something like that. Um, this is a good time to move things like that. Um, there's still enough heat left and enough uh, decent weather left in this part of the world. And the frost will probably come end of September, early October. We got a good month where the plants can really get established. And uh, the good thing about moving them like this is I can take the soil up with them and everything. Um, but that's a you know you can see there's strawberries growing on it, so you know it's uh, <laughs> it's been here all summer long. But it's still a good time to move it because I don't want it there. I <laughs> end up stepping on the strawberries all the time anyway. So, yeah, it's a perfectly happy plant, but it's just not growing where I want it to grow, so it's got to be moved. I'll give you another example here. So if you look along this walkway, you'll see there's some strawberries growing um, there, there, and they're not where I want them to be. You know, I'll zoom in a little bit. See, that's a runner. You can see, you can see the, the runner came off the main plant. Here's another one. Got some root hairs coming off of it. And this one got some little tiny root hairs. I don't know if I can zoom in on that. That's about as zoomed as it can be. Anyway, you'll have to trust me, there's root hairs on there um, and they can be moved. Uh, I want to just cut them off and show you. So when you're cutting off a runner, you follow it all the way back to where it came off the main plant, the parent plant. You want to leave as much of that on there as possible because it's like an umbilical cord. This this has uh, you know energy and nutrients that the uh, the baby can use. Uh, you know it's happier being attached, but 
I think we can make do here. So there's one I can move. Uh, this one here can be moved too because I don't want it growing there. So let's zoom in on that one. That one's already rooted a bit. So I gotta gently get it out. I'll cut the runner off. It's actually created two. There's one here that's already well rooted, so that can be left alone. I'm happy with that being here. There's some chicory growing here, but um, there's one that we can move. And this guy, kind of growing in. This guy can come out. Just sort of cut around it. I find to use a knife in the garden more than just about any other tool. It's more precise than a little gardening spade, I find. More dangerous too, I guess, but... Danger is my middle name! <laughs> Alright, so I'm trying to get this guy out without cutting myself too bad. It was growing right into the log. There. There's some good roots on that guy. I don't know how visible that is. Anyway, we've got some plants we can move here. So here's an area in my garden where I, I want strawberries to grow. Um, all I did was, you know, this had weeds in it. And uh, I was getting tired of ripping the weeds out. They tend to migrate in from out here. So uh, I just covered it in bags and bags of leaves. And it seemed to smother them out quite well. So I'm just going to get down to the soil here. Find the soil. This is just the existing soil. It's just been mulched with seaweed and hay and leaves and stuff like that. Where's our runner? So you just take the runner, I don't know what that is, something root. Probably blackberry bushes, blackberry bushes there, look at those right, look at those roots. Blackberry bushes seem to want to come in from everywhere here. Anyway, so to lay them over sideways like that, and give them a good covering with the soil, like that. And move the mulch around, protect the soil, keep the soil from drying out. This old seaweed's going to be fine. Then bury the bury the uh, the runners as well. That'll help them if they're able to gather water in any way. That'll help them do that. There, that guy should be fine. Um, we'll check back on that next year. It took minutes, right? So I just took a runner that was in the wrong place and put it somewhere where I wanted it to be. Let's do another one over here. one's got nice roots. Uh, all right, so just gonna loosen this off a bit here. Yes, this isn't good for my knife blade, but you can see I'm using it backwards. Probably not very safe, but well, in my garden I can be as unsafe as I want. I don't want to dull the blade. All right, that's good. Look at that, beautiful strawberry. Mmm. I'm gonna have a snack while I'm working here. All right. Oh, it's delicious. Okay, again, you just fan those hairs out. Right, so they can cover as much area as possible. And then put the soil up. Some grub there. Out of there. Fan the soil up. Fan the hairs out, the, the roots. Get lots of that mulch on there. Because it is going to be sunny in a couple, you know, it's going to rain tomorrow all day. 
but it is going to be sunny eventually. And I'll just get this runner and bury that too. It's able to take up any moisture from the soil and, and send it to the plants. I'm just helping that along. Alright, so that's there's a slug. Get out of there. Alright, so there's one we planted. And there's the other one. That's all you gotta do. That's how you do it. I'm not gonna, because it's gonna rain tomorrow, I'm not gonna bother watering them. You know, if, um, well, that's a good point. Let's say, just because of timing and, uh, you know, uh, your schedule, your work schedule, whatever, you had to do it today and it was gonna be sunny tomorrow, what would you do? Well, I would give them a, a good watering this evening. And then I would also cover them with something. Let's say it was gonna be a super sunny day tomorrow. Put something over them that's gonna, you know, filter the sunlight out. So I'd put maybe this old net. I use this to keep uh, squirrels out of my squirrels and birds out of my strawberries. Put that over them. Or um, if you're like me and uh, you live next to a forest, let me just zoom out again here. If you're like me and your garden backs onto a forest. Um, you just take a couple branches off a spruce tree or a pine tree or something and throw those over for, you know, three or four or five days just while the roots have a chance to, you know, get get themselves uh, acquainted with the soil um, because, uh, yeah, if you're going to let the sun get on a plant like that when you've moved it and it's vulnerable like that, it's not, it's not going to have a very good chance of success. Um, where was that other one? We're gonna dig out of the ground. All right, so here we have an established plant. I don't know if this wind's bad or not. Sorry about the wind. There's a storm about to come. It's about to rain. I can just feel it. Anyway, we've got an established plant here. And uh, I don't want it growing in my walkway because I'm just gonna step on it and smush this, the strawberries. So we gotta get that out of there. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me through the wind here. It's, it's, there's a storm a brewing, but uh, Let's just get this done. So because I'm moving this, you know, flowering and producing fruit is, uh, you know, takes energy from a plant. So I'm going to take both of these stems off that are making the strawberries because I don't want the plant focusing on that right now. I want the plant focusing on rooting where I'm going to move it to. So I'll just get rid of those. We'll eat those guys later. So I'm just going to Get these uh, wood chips out of here from my walkway. Look how black that soil is underneath the wood chips. I always wonder if my walkways are better soil than the gardens. Uh, <laughs> These things seem to grow in them, no problem. Um, okay, so now I got that guy. So now I'm just going to cut around it. This actually I do want my gardening spade, but I can't find it. My kids did something with it, so I'm going to have to use this uh, homey gardening tool. And it's a good all-around tool, but it's really not ideal for this, but that seems to work anyway. So see, I got that whole thing out. Right? I'm not going to upset it too much. Okay, so I make this look like it never happened. And now I'll move this guy to a, a new home someplace where there's no strawberries right now. Okay, we've got a good spot right there. I got this guy here. There's a runner trying to grow right there. I'll move him over to a better spot. Get going right there, buddy. You'll be fine. Now I'm going to put this guy right here. So, push the mulch aside. A lot of mulch here. Make a bit of a hole. Not to be too fancy. Stick him in the hole. Get the mulch around him there. Done. 
All right. All right, just a quick video because of the interest in that the general topic of moving the strawberries and propagating strawberries. No, you really can't go wrong uh, going to a garden center in the spring and throwing out 10 or 15 bucks and getting some uh, bare root strawberries. They're usually sold in a, in a container with just bare roots and you, you plant them almost the same way I'm planting these nodes. Um, it's just the roots are longer. Um, once they've established themselves, they'll start, every strawberry will make three new strawberries every year. So you can spread them out. Now the good thing about that is, given that it's uh, very early September, if you know someone that has strawberries, you can get the runners from them, just like I, I just moved some of mine around. If you've got a good friend or a buddy or whatever, someone that's got a strawberry garden, and uh, they consider the runners a problem, um, you can just show up and, you know, I mean, I could easily pull 30 or 40 runners out of this garden, no problem, they're all over the place. If you buy your strawberries next um, spring and plant them in the spring, you're really not going to, if they're uh, day neutrals, you might get some strawberries in, in the fall, like I'm getting right now. Um, but if you plant a, a June bearer next spring, it's not going to give you anything that year. It's gonna, not going to give you anything until the following year. But if, if you could plant some strawberries right now using runners, and they got established over the fall, and they went dormant over the winter, and they came back in the spring, you probably get strawberries next spring. So it's, it's a good idea to try to get them in the ground now. Uh, the garden centers never seem to sell them this time of year, which baffles me. Um, this is a great time of year to plant strawberries, <laughs> in my opinion, because I've done it before and it works. So, um, um, but I guess there's just no demand, and, and you know, retail stores work on demand, not on what makes the most sense for gardeners. Uh, so, getting off topic here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like the content, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Maritime, uh, check out my uh, podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. We should have a uh, a new episode of the podcast coming out this Saturday. Uh, other than that, uh, until next time, get out there, have fun in your garden. There's lots to do, lots to do in September. Uh, so get out there and get at it. See you next time.